So here is the first tutorial. Now there is a slide deck that you can access. There's also the wiki online that describes the steps, uh, written out instructions with full source code listing. And then of course here's the GitHub repository where you can uh, download the code. So let's just walk through this. This is really the first one is just getting started with JSP uh, and model to architecture. Here's the wiki location, uh, wiki for couchocom building a simple listing in JSP. And this is part of this bigger Java EE tutorial uh, covering JSP 2.2 and Serial 3.0. There's a video on that as well uh, if you want to see or, or hear uh, what that tutorial is all about. So there's the wiki, the source code, the slides, and the videos. This first cookbook of this tutorial uh, expects uh, very little knowledge of HTML. Uh, points you in the right direction, shows you some basic HTML, some basic CSS to get started. Some knowledge of Java would be nice, uh, but nothing is really, not too much is assumed. We try to point you in the right direction if you don't uh, know Java or JSP. We do not cover Java and HTML in detail. We will point you where to learn more about it so that you can come back to this um, JSP servlet tutorial and start doing some Java web development. The focus really is on Java servlets and JSP. You can use whatever IDE you like. We are using Eclipse. This is the basic app that you're going to build and the first four cookbooks. You click the add book link. It's going to pop up a book form page. Uh, there was a little demo on this in the first video. You can sort the headers. You can edit a book, add a book, remove a book, and sort a book and list a book. So that's the basic operations. CRUD create, read, update, delete. Now, why did we pick Eclipse? Well, this green line is Eclipse, and uh, it's fairly pervasive. That would be the one reason. The other reason, it's free, and it supports Java EE well, so it, it serves the purposes of this tutorial. Um, you are welcome to use whatever IDE you like. There are some very good IDEs out there. I think that probably the best IDE, in my opinion, is IntelliJ, but Eclipse is very good, and it's free, and it works. And there's a nice resin plugin, which is a nice Java EE6 server. You can run this whole thing within the IDE. Show that in the first video. If you're using Windows or OS X, that's fine. I use OS X all the time. I usually do most of my development in Linux because Linux is usually the deployment environment for most of the places that I've worked at in the last 10 years, 12 years, really. So I've never really seen anyone deploy on Windows. So my recommendation for this tutorial and just for your own uh, personal development is if you're using Windows to go ahead and get VMware or VirtualBox and install Ubuntu or CentOS and make that your main development environment. You know, just allocate the virtual machine enough memory. Uh, it's actually pretty quick and uh, get you going in the right direction. Of course, you could run this on Windows and OS X. I think you'll later on when we're installing things like MySQL and whatnot. I think it'll be a little bit easier if you're doing it in Linux, so you should maybe just give it a try. But uh, of course this will also work in Windows and uh, OS X. So these are basically what we're going to cover in this first tutorial. You can see it's very quick. Uh, this is basically from the wiki, tells you what to do with Eclipse step by step. First thing you're going to do with Eclipse is you're going to install this uh, resin Java EE web profile server. Once you have that installed, then you can create a new uh, dynamic web project and then you can launch that web project, debug it right there in Eclipse, add breakpoints. Uh, you modify a file, it gets uh, redeployed automatically. So it's a nice, uh, a nice productive environment. I think you'll find um, doing the tutorial is quite easy once you have the IDE set up and, it, and it's these days IDEs are really easy to set up much better than it was 12 years ago. Creating a simple book listing for a bookstore. So we're going to have a book. This there are the, These are the instructions. Of course you can get the slide deck to show you how to create this first Java object. If you're not familiar with Java, you, know, you probably want to check out the official Java tutorial. There's links from the slide deck as well as links from the wiki and uh, read about uh, the first four trails in that tutorial and then come back here 
If you've done programming, that should be enough to continue with the JSP server tutorial. We define a repository interface. That's the main interface that we use for accessing the book objects from the database. So it's basically look up book, add book, update book, remove book, and list books. I'll show you how to do that in Eclipse. One of the reasons why we did it this way is later on we'll replace this implementation with a JDBC version, a JPA version, a MongoDB version, a version that uses JCache, and so on and so forth. So we wanted to put this in an interface so that we could easily swap out different implementations as we cover these in the tutorial. You could scan this, it's just plain Java, basically. We've got some methods here to help us uh, set up a book and set up a list of books and we use those uh, to configure some test data. So books takes a bunch of books and then that becomes part of the repository. And then we um, have a helper method to add the books. This first version again doesn't talk to JDBC or anything so uh, it, and it is going to be used by multiple servlets so we have to synchronize the access to the collection. And if you don't know what that meant, just copy the code for now. <laughs> you can cut and paste it right out of the uh, uh, wiki tutorial or and read about uh, thread synchronization in the Java tutorial or skip that for later. Here you can look up a book by ID and again this ID to book is just a hash map. So. Here it is, the add the book, update book, do list books. This basically gets a list of books from the hash map. List books again, it looks like, and the remove book operation. Later on, we'll do these in JDBC, and then later on, JPA MongoDB. So be interesting to look at the differences. It's a really basic class. It's largely based on the Java Collection API, this book repository. It's not really the focus of the tutorial, it's just something we needed to do the listing. But one interesting thing about this book repository implementation is we are using the application scoped annotation so that we can inject this into the servlet. And this is a, a part of uh, Java E6. Specifically, there's some tutorials about these features uh, linked if you want to know more about that. You don't need to know more for the tutorial. But application scope means it's gonna be around for the entire web application. And that's what that looks like at the be very beginning of that book repository. Now, we've separated the code such that we have a model. We have a book and a book repository. That's our model. We define our web controller. So we, we do a MVC style uh, development. And that's our servlet controller. And then we have our view, which is the JSPs. So servlet's a Java class that handles HTTP requests. Java web application consists of one or more servlets yeah, plus JSPs, Java classes, all bundled up into a WAR file. And a WAR file is basically a zip file that has the structure that the Java EE server is expecting so that you can deploy the WAR file as a, a single binary, if you will. So servlets run inside of a container like Calcho's resin. Uh, end users typically use a Java web application through a web browser like Apple Safari, Google Chrome, Mozilla, or God forbid, Internet Explorer. When you want to create your first servlet, if you are using Eclipse, uh, there is a create servlet GUI, if you will. So you would just uh, right click in the pod project explorer and say new servlet, enter in the, uh, the package and the servlet name, and then you can even add a URL mapping so you don't have to do any uh, configuration. Actually, the first four, uh, there's no XML configuration for the servlets at all. We just use the new annotations that are part of Java E6. So the very first servlet we create is the book list servlet. We use the URL style mapping, so if, it, uh, if a URL ends in a slash, it means that we're working with the collection. If it doesn't end in a slash, it means that we're doing actions uh, on the collection itself. Uh, like adding a book or removing a book. We modify the generated servlet to only handle the doGet method. And let's show what that looks like. So here's our book servlet. Uh, it uses, we're using the CDI injection here that's gonna inject that book repository implementation since there's only one. And then we, we look up the books using that book repository and we put those in request scope. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we, 
dispatch to the JSP to actually show the results. So this is the controller. This servlet's the controller. This uh, book repository is the model object. So you look up the books. The books are also the model object. You put those into request scope and then you delegate to the JSP to actually render them. And that's a typical model to architecture. It's a good separation of concerns and it makes the HTML templates, the JSPs, a little easier to read. Why JSP is in the WebINF? Now, if you go back, you'll notice that this is in WebINF. If you put the JSPs in WebINF, then the end user can't use the browser to load them directly. And if you're using a Model 2 architecture, that's important because you really want the servlets to talk to the model to, to prepare the view. That's part of the architecture. So putting them in the JSPs makes them so that they're not accessible to the end user.